Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the PHP podcast for um, for web developers mainly. Um, anyone interested in web? Anyone interested in uh, listening to uh, both the interesting stuff we talk about and the absolute gibberish that we come out with, which uh, which happens on a regular basis? Uh, I'm Lewis Keynes, the uh, the host for this week, and joined uh, joining me this week, I have my three good web developer colleagues, uh, Mr. Michael Budd. Hello. Hello. How am I doing so far in your role, Mike? Mate, I am really impressed. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit frescent, if oh. I'm being honest. But we thought we'd do uh, a little experiment tonight, so I thought I'd give yeah. it a go. Can you just uh, put your best normal can we, we take the out, can we take the outtakes on to the end? We should idea. tag at least Ed's nutty outtakes. Oh, that should go yes. three nuts. Yeah, we, this, uh, we have taken about five minutes just to actually do the introduction. <laughs> this, is, this is the fourth yeah. take, which is... Normally we're straight in and it's no problem, but it's not too bad. Anyway, those yeah. other voices you heard there. The first one was uh, Fraser Hart. Hello, Fraser. Hello, how you doing? Oh, there you are. <laughs> it was a delayed response. And um, Ed, the player man. Hello, sir. haven't sirs. referred to you that way for quite a while, but I thought Ed I'd bring it back. Man. So, yeah. You guys will keep him well? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. really not well. Yeah. Sorry, I should have said someone's name then when I asked that. That is the, uh, the curse, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it certainly yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> should we should we go around the old uh, around the loop, see how everyone's doing? Uh, Ed, first of all, how are you, sir? How's your week been? I've been very good, man. Very good indeed. Um, what have I been up to this week? Well, work as usual, and some blog posts, which I will talk about later. But work related, really, it's been a lot of refactoring, which we all love. I'm sure we do a lot of. Well, I'm actually getting the chance to refactor some stuff I wrote probably about half a year ago now. And it's that kind of moment where you're thinking, why, why did I go down this route? And you're looking at code and you're like, yeah, I could refactor that into a couple of lines now. So, yeah, it's been a pretty interesting week. Cool. That's pretty much what I do on a nine-to-five basis now anyway. So I can't remember the last time I wrote something new, actually. I'm always going back over, uh, over old <laughs> stuff and rewriting it. You kind of get into a bit of a vicious circle like that. Anyway, uh, Michael yeah. Budd, how are you, sir? I am, um, yeah, better than I've been for a while, to be honest with you, because the last, like, three months, every time I've come on here, I've said, oh, yeah, I've got loads of uni work, but now I have finished my year, so, uh, and we <laughs> the year. Um Well, I've got two exams, basically, I've got them left at the end of May, um, but in terms of all my assignments, uh, yes, yeah, I've, um, I'm in the 70% mark itch, uh, so, yeah, no, it's, it's, God, I'm not better than I thought, if I'm being blatantly honest. But um, yeah, so to get that out of the way is a huge relief, uh, which means that I can now concentrate on things like decorating before the baby's born. and um, But also, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but um, I want to start making my first app. So I've kind of just started doing that this week. But I'll, uh, I'll tell you guys about that in a bit, I guess. Oh, blimey. Just as a, just as a, as a little tease, have you you've yeah. nailed what, what it is that you want to make then? Um, yeah, kind of. I, mean, I kind of did it with two other guys. Um, a guy who's like um, a marketing guy. He's really good at the whole market research type of stuff and actually promoting stuff. And I'm doing it with um, a designer as well. So he's going to take all, all that side of stuff. But in terms of the idea, then, yeah, I, good. I've kind of come up with it. But I I won't re- reveal it on here, just in case uh, Edman pinches the idea, to be honest. Yeah. Um, is it Flappy a, Bird? Yeah. Just... <laughs> Flappy Bird too. This is this is um, an unofficial pause. Um, Fraser just said as well. Anyone else losing audio? My audio has been patchy. Really, I, I've really? got it perfect from all of you. Mine's fine as well. Yeah. Oh, I heard I had gaps in in Michael's, but really, oh. I, I've yeah. had gaps in Ed. Maybe maybe it's uh... that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> maybe it's Michael's new uh, new toy he's got. What's this uh, MacBook Whoa. or something? Yeah. Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, uh, MacBook Air. Uh, is, it, is that a new one? Yeah, oh, well played. <laughs> Thanks, man. It what size hard drive? Oh, it's tiny. It's absolutely pitiful. It's a uh, hundred. Is it hundred twenty-eight gigabyte? I think yeah, I've got one twenty-eight on mine as well. Yeah, sorry if I, guys. Sorry if I spoke over that. Then I lost audio, and I was saying hello. Oh, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear that. And now, and now I've just said that and completely ruined your flight. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I can, I can recover. Uh, to a yeah, questionable start. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I've probably got the same one as you, Fred. You got the MacBook Air, have you? you... I have. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, so eight gig of RAM, and I don't know what processor it's got. But you got eight gig of RAM. I think I've only got four. So. Have you? Um... Oh. You want yeah. to upgrade that, but that's the thing with the with the solid state drive. It it doesn't make a massive amount of difference, to be honest. Oh, me and Ed were having this conversation the other day, and it you know in terms of like the spec, when you look at it, you think it, it's not impressive, really, by today's yeah. standards. But it is the SSD that that you know, makes it, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's night and day. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's, it, I think it is like the biggest performance boost you can do now, really, because yeah, you know, processors aren't getting much faster, or if at all. Uh, um, so yeah, it makes it just makes a huge difference. Things like you know, as you know, like booting up in like what is it like five six seconds? It, it's just yeah. nothing. Um, yeah, yeah and you open Photoshop and you, you, you yeah, you fire Photoshop open and it's open in like two seconds as opposed to like thirty yeah. seconds. Yeah, exactly. And because I've got um, the full Adobe Suite on my iMac, and uh, that is a little bit like you say, Photoshop's probably takes a little while to be fair. So um, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's such a, a beautiful machine. Um, it really I'm, even just to look at and touch it's just yeah it's, it's, yeah oh, i love it. it the craftsmanship in it is just insane i mean i don't know how they get what they get inside of it it's just is it amazing all, yeah. is, it, is the uh, the actual memory upgradable or is it all soldered on is that the the, the one I, on it? it's yeah it's it's pretty much you you start up with whatever yeah. you buy i think i think there are there are people there are ways of doing it but it's it's kind of scary to uh, a bit, open this a bit thing sketchy up. in terms yeah. of yeah. Uh, so what about the iMac though, Mickey? What happened there? <laughs> oh, yeah. There must be a story there. So yeah, last Friday my iMac, the um the display just went it just completely turned off basically. But there was nothing oh, wrong right. with the operating system because I, I had a secondary display and I could see everything running fine. Um and I had a few kind of issues like earlier in the week, like the brightness just kept changing by itself. And like I read all these different threads, like it's obviously quite a common problem. But like there were so many things like people said, I'll make sure the computer's not getting too hot. So I installed like this fan app to see what the temperature was and all yeah. kinds of stuff really. But the long shot of it, the worst possible outcome is that the um, like the, the backboard, the lighting, that's gone. But if that's gone, apparently you're looking about eight hundred pounds to get repaired. So obviously you would you would probably get a new iMac, wouldn't you? But um yeah, yeah bad news on that front. I wasn't happy about that's that, so I sent it off. It's gone off to the workshop you... to be looked at. Yeah, How yeah. Much... They they literally they, they took fifty quid off me just. To... And we've lost audio. Yeah, I'm struck. Yeah, yeah this is, this is, it is hopeless. Yeah, I know. I don't know why it's but so bad today. I'm blaming it on Michael because he's not got his iMac, you know, and it's kind of this. Has he just completely gone? I think he has. I think he's at his parents' house as well on the <coughs> Wi-Fi. Oh, we got a cough. Was that Michael? I think that was Lewis, oh, wasn't me. it? Oh, no. Yes. All oh, right, there you go. Are you back he's again? Back. You're back again. No, he's, <laughs> and he's not. Gone and he's gone. Oh, oh dear. my word. Well, so I, I think probably it'd be good to go with picks of the week or hot picks, as Mickey likes to talk about them, uh, say about them. So, Lou, have you got any uh, picks of the week? I don't know. We haven't finished going around the old, uh, around the group, have we, about our weeks ago? Oh, bugger, we haven't, have we? Sorry about yeah, that. Jump, jump the gun there. I know, I, I have completely. This is like, you know... Sorry. Just because it's, it's Laravel week, you can't wait oh, to get stuck Laravel. in. Laravel. Yeah. I've got a lot of notes on it, so we should uh, have fun. But I, f- I figured the rest of us should probably talk at some point in this podcast, so we probably better do this bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Fraser... Yeah. How and then we'll your... hand over to you. Uh, <laughs> my week has been fairly standard. The project that I keep talking about, about almost coming to an end... I think Almost it's come to an end. I haven't done any work it really? on it. Yeah, I, I haven't done any work on it in, I think, five working days. So, no, yeah, a, a whole working week, which is phenomenal because it's nice to work on new stuff. So, I'm actually at the moment working on a Laravel site, which will really? obviously come in handy because we're going to be talking on La- about Laravel. Um, it's not Laravel 4, it's Laravel 3. Point whatever. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll sketch over those de- little details. Um, <laughs> so, it's been good, though. It's been really good fun getting back into into well just doing different stuff to be honest because i've been working on that last project for like the last year um it's, it's a fine project and everything but you just find yourself re not rehashing but kind of doing stuff that you're already familiar with and doing it over and over and over and over and over again because it's exactly yeah and it's just nice to be able to think slightly differently and and what have you um so yeah that's that's been really good um i've got a bunch of freelance work stacked well not stacked up it's not a lot of it i've got one project on the back burner that i'm just waiting for some stuff from the designer before i can finish that one um and then outside of work it's been a really busy one with the 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 row as well um 
Yeah, I noticed that. Know. I noticed that. Um, it, have you shipped it off now? Is it? It's we yeah we yeah we took it to. Well, I went down to I went to Bournemouth last night and slept on it in in a field. Um, on a trailer obviously not just like a boat kind of leaned over in the middle of a field um yes i slept on there last night woke up at six o'clock this morning it was like freezing cold like put my hand outside the cabin there was like ice and frost everywhere oh wow and uh yeah so we've we've towed it to southampton today and then uh yeah we've we've left it with a shipping company who are gonna put it in a container and ship it off to california for the start of the race so so you've seen the last time you've seen it then since until the actual race then yeah definitely and it's it's getting very very close now so it's yeah it's it's kind of exciting, but yeah, oh, it's very all good. good. And, and what's this about yeah. the Friday pastries or something I saw on Twitter? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, like um, Kim, who you guys obviously know for the people that are listening that don't know who Kim is. Uh, Kim is Ed's ex-girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she, 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 <laughs> no. She works, she, works, she works at the same place that... Um, that Ed and, and Michael and Lewis and myself all used to work together, how we, how we all know each other. Um, she basically came up with this idea of like every second Friday would be like wacky food day. And it's like you bring, we have a, a theme every other week and it's, yeah, you bring food. And so we've That's done a, cool. a sushi one. And yeah, and to the sushi one, I brought soy sauce and some wasabi <laughs> because I can't cook. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we had pie Friday was was last week and I managed to kind of scrape together a, it was more like a, a a beef and Guinness stew with a pie crust on top. But I, I saw the picture. I thought it was all right. I did like the picture. Uh, yeah. Is this why you yeah. randomly had a picture of you guys doing a barbecue in your uh, out, in your kitchen area? That's right. Yeah, because that that was like kebab kebab week. So Jez made these like really good uh, like lamb patties with mint and Ooh, and stuff on them. Nice. And then yeah, got like a a camp table and a camp stove and cooked it up in the kitchen in the office. So it was it was pretty cool, man. <laughs> So who won? Was there a winner or was everyone a winner for partake? No, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's not really like a competition. It's so you won like then, everyone. Yeah, you won yeah, I, th- yeah. I, think, yeah. I think your ex-girlfriend made the best pie though because <laughs> <laughs> it was like really, really dense with, with meat and stuff and so mine was actually, just a bit crap because so it was a stew. <laughs> so she put a lot of effort in then. See, that's the thing. She did, yeah, there? she did very well. Um, and Justin did well as well. Like he, Justin, the designer who we had on a, a few weeks ago that, for the people that are listening, um, he's lived in, in, I think he lives in Patagonia in South America for a while so he, he made some traditional Patagonian oh, things wow. with Patagonian stuff in them, and they were quite nice. <laughs> you just oh, eating what? it. You don't know what it is, but you're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's and then we had a beer, and it was good. That's not bad at all, not bad at all. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, so that's Friday. been my week. How about you then, Lude? Back to the host. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very, very, very busy still. Not a lot, not I massive. Thought, I thought you said that you were really quiet at the moment. I mean, that's yeah. All, yeah. Scrabbling around, not, not working as we do the podcast at all. Uh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> No, it's been it's been very busy and uh, got got more projects coming along as well. I had um, a phone call at lunchtime today with uh, a couple more freelancing things to crack on with. So yeah, the tally uh, the tally of work is building, but I'm certainly not complaining. It's a lot of fun. So, so how, how many how many freelance things have you got on at the moment? Then it must be like four or something. I've got I've got one that I'm actively working on. I've got another one that. Um, the one of the, the other golf one where the guy is still waiting on he's had some professional photos done Ooh. so he's he's waiting for those to come through and then i can pass them on to the guy that's going to do the design for me but Are they uh but, photos uh yeah they well they're <laughs> posing yeah, they with are. his driver and <laughs> yeah. stuff you know and I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what, yeah runs. i guess so i mean he's trying to get <laughs> posing with his wood out <laughs> oh mickey's back this is a family show <laughs> i think I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that. Yeah. And then uh, what else? These other two today, they're going to contact me over the weekend with um, with like a site map and stuff, so I can give them a projection of time and cost and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's all good. And then obviously Very got cool. my got my uh, got my actual job on the go as well, which is which is pretty manic as well. So, yeah, things things are good. Things so, are going so well. How have, you, how have you got this freelance stuff? Then it's just word of mouth and people just. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, yeah. I, I know, I do know all these, but I haven't had any contacts from anyone that I haven't that I don't know, which uh, which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm happy for the people that I know to contact me. You know, it's good that it's good that they've uh, they've thought to do that. But you know, if I can do a good job for them, who knows where it may lead? Absolutely, so, feels like yeah. a portfolio. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Yeah, and, was it the big P word last week? I remember, I remember listening back. It's like, yeah, the big P word. Your portfolio. That's the e-commerce thing. Yeah, I haven't actually touched that in the last week. I've been working on on other bits. So, uh, I've got to get back onto that ASAP, to be honest as well. So, it's it's always tricky when you've got so many things on the go to to like figure yeah, how, out. How price. do you do it then? Do you just separate like I'm going to work maybe half a day on this one and then half a day on the other one, or do you just 
kind of I, I need I want to get this one done first, then get on to the next one. Well, I'm, I'm working on my freelance stuff I'm doing before and after work. Before so, work? Wow. That must yeah, be I get, I'm getting in like an hour and a half early to try and do some, some bits and bobs. Yeah, it's a long... Yeah, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing like seven till ten days at the moment. So wow. I'm pretty worn out. So uh, a few beers on Friday will be very welcome. But at work, I've... Because uh, two of the projects I've got are really big ones at the moment. I'm just taking a break from those and trying to nail some of the smaller ones. So yeah, to get them out of the way, that's a good idea. Yeah, but in in the case of one of these smaller ones, there was I needed to um, have a facility to upload multiple images, which I hadn't built into my framework yet. So I, I spent I don't know the best part of three and a half, four days building in this whole thing with with Uploadify. I oh think, yeah, I saw that tweet. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys used that? I have. I've used it on a, a side project before, and it's pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's I've so good. It. It's brilliant. Yeah. So so easy and perfect to work with, and I've. Uh, I've been able to weave it into my into my framework perfectly, so it works with everything. So, I've built this whole um, captioning thing on top of it as well, which is nice. So, uh, very cool. Yeah. So, but it, it's it's taken a lot of time and a lot of testing, and it's all it's all in one. Uh, the method that calls it all is in my HTML helper file, and it's somewhere in the region of two hundred and fifty <laughs> lines long. So, <laughs> H- have you got a name for this framework yet, or are you still pondering? I don't know. For some reason, I thought about the word shoelace earlier on, but shoelace. I thought the shoelace framework. Ooh. And what would your command line utility be? And where would, what would your ORM be? And oh, I haven't I haven't got that far. <laughs> shoelace, you've got your sock. I suppose I do have a command line utility built into yeah. it that I use a lot. But I've got a nice a nice little one. PHP. Uh, I think I called it migrate like the that bit. PHP migrate dump all, which just does a complete dump of my database. And uh, and writes it to a file, so I've got it. And then PHP migrate rebuild, which then rebuilds it. Oh, very cool! So uh, whenever I'm um, pushing and pulling between computers and stuff, I can just do that to get all my databases up to date quickly. Very cool. Very so cool indeed. Yeah, I like those. I use them a lot. So, uh, but yeah, still still no actual names yet. I need to I need to give it a name. That's for sure. Maybe the uh, three devs uh, universe can. Uh... Band together well, yeah. and kind of think of a name. <laughs> yeah, by, nothing by rude. Things. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh dear. Um, well, oh, yeah, we could get a few people to send some in, and then you could select a few, and then you could have like a a, a Britain's Got Talent kind of thing where <laughs> yeah. people have to vote for them. Simon, or you get a premium style. rate phone number. <laughs> yeah, just you've got to be on there <laughs> yeah. for at least five minutes. You know. Yeah. So, oh dear. Like, yeah. Welcome to the. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Three devs. And a minute, yeah, etc. Anyway, I'm not going to go on. <laughs> so, Vicky, about... Vicky, you're back now. What happened there? Back. Is it the uh, I... shoddy hotspot Wi-Fi? I'm afraid so. It's pretty shocking. Not a problem, man. Have you got uh, any picks of the week? Um, I haven't really because uh, I just well I haven't. But um, yeah, yeah no I mean, excuses anything... this week. You're not at uni anymore. I know. Can't. I haven't got any excuses. But I guess the only thing I can say is I started playing with the um, the Android development kit and the Facebook development kit. Uh, but could I really say much about it at the minute? Probably not. But anyone who's interested, who knows a little bit of um, Java, I would say it's, it's fairly straightforward. There's lots of nice tutorials that you can download actually from there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did it and I managed to get to the point where I could have like a Facebook login on like an emulated app in about an hour and a half. And so how is probably- the emulator? Is it dog slow still or have you been? It able- is dog slow. Yeah. Uh, it really is painful. There's no. Um, Especially yeah, this, is on your, this will be on your MacBook Air now as well, won't it? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a little bit quicker, I have to say, but it's still dog slow, to be fair. Um, I wait, think wait, you, did you say you would... Sorry, did this? Is, did you say this was going to be an Android app? Yeah, I know. It's controversial, isn't Ooh. it? Yeah, I know. This guy, this guy. Yeah, are you, I know. Are you coming over? Are you coming <laughs> over to the dark side? <laughs> yeah, how, how, are you gonna, how are you going to test it? I suppose you've got your work phone, haven't you? Yeah, I've got my work phone, um, but obviously for the um, majority, I'll be just using the emulator. But uh, yeah, it's just because I, you know, I know Java, and um, obviously that's just the like the primary language, I guess, for uh, building apps for Android. So I, I could have done yeah. something using, um, you know, like Titanium or whatever you guys have used, but I wanted to do something. Uh, I, I wanted to do something Java because I, you know, I I'm a big fan of Java. Um, for me, it's it's quite easy to use. It's kind of like you know what um, it's, it does exactly what it says on the tin, that kind of thing. So you know, like I said, the tutorial was really easy. Um, and once I've built it on this, if you know if it did well, then I'd, I'd definitely look at trying to uh, do something for 
for iOS and have a look at Objective C, but I know absolutely nothing about Objective C. But I'm guessing you've got I think it's a lot more. What's the word? A lot uh, closer to the machine. You got a lot more memory management that stuff. I guess. Yeah, is that right? it is a bit. I think what I, I remember of it. I did a couple a bit of years ago though. Yeah. Um, so how about you, Lou? Any picks for the week? Um, all I can say is I was arguing with the missus the other day and she called me an objective C. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, so knock it out of the park every time. Yeah. Um, no, only Uploadify and uh, J Scroll Pane, which I've used. I mean, they're, they're old things, aren't they? But That's cool. Uh, J can Scroll you put Pane's all nice. these the show notes? Like, Lou, uh, Mickey, can you send me those, the SDKs yeah. and stuff? That'd be awesome. Yep, cool. No yeah, um, yeah. It's the only it's the only thing I've found actually where you can actually mess around with your scroll bars, and it it seems to work quite nicely because obviously Chrome and stuff. There's, you don't need to worry about that stuff. But when you get into the older browsers and stuff, the scroll bars look a bit horrible, and they can make it look a bit rubbish. So but shouldn't IE six be dead now with the uh, the good news of Windows XP? It's life, you know, support gone. Oh wow! Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Which um, I probably should. I think but... I yeah, it's dead. I think it was last late last week or so. Like Windows Seven XP, kind of like their support system for it. They I don't know if they've pushed it back another month, but I'm pretty sure that because what's happened is is that browser then is oh, that is the last version of um, the operating system that actually has IE six support. So, oh, fine. Yeah, so that's kind of good news for us. And they'll be pestered now, the users, to go on to another machine like Windows, hopefully to start using Windows 7. Because Windows 7 comes with IE8, doesn't it? Out of the box, I think. Uh, Does it? Not sure. I thought 9. Maybe, yeah, 9 then. Sorry, I'm, I'm a Mac 7. man these days. I don't days. know what I'm... I would have thought 9 as well. So 9, yeah, so 9, then 10 is... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because then 10 is um, good old Windows 8. Um, but yeah, they should move to Mac anyway. I'm only joking. Uh, how about you, Fraser? Any picks of the week? I don't really have any picks, no, but just to move on a bit from uh, what Lewis, not move on, but what Lewis was saying about Uploadify, something similar that I've used, or I believe it's similar anyway, is one called uh, dropzone.js. Um, and it's cool as anything. Like if you've got a, if you've got like a standard image upload form, you can just basically instantiate this over the, the standard form without having to do anything else, and it replaces it all, so you can drag and drop your images onto there. Um, and, yeah, it's just an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal thing. I think it's called Drop Zone. Um, this is something that I've been working on on the, the project that I'm now no longer working on, but it's just really simple to set up, and you can upload single images or you can upload multiple images, and it gives you a nice little progress bar with it as well, and it's, yeah, it's phenomenal. Is it, yeah, is it like uploadify? Do you just use Ajax to kind of do everything, or yes, I've I've never used uploadify, but it's it's literally you can take an existing form and just drop it over an existing form, and it'll it'll do all the Ajax stuff for you. Yeah, so you have to write very little code. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you've got working, if you've got a word form, it, it yeah, it handles it all for you. I'm almost worried to look at this now because I probably realised that this is this would probably take me about half the time of what I did before. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> uh, Lou, actually, can I take this opportunity to apologise to our listeners? If that's all right. Of course. For? Uh, well, basically, someone did comment on our last podcast on a comment I made about um, Code Igniter. Oh yeah, and, and the point was basically cause I, I looked at the ar- architectural goals of Code Nights, and one of which was about the um, the loose coupling and high cohesion. And I kind of said that it did adhere to that. But in my defence, I did say that it, I was referring mainly to the libraries and helpers, and um, and I do st- still stand by that. But I think what the guy was saying, and quite rightly, was that all the core code in Code Igniter is is very tightly coupled. And as soon as I looked into it after reading his comments, he is absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, suffer for my risk for that one. But, um, yeah. Can you um, explain kind of some of that terminology there? That you... Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, basically, the idea of low coupling and high cohesion is that basically one, uh, I'm using this in the OO, OO kind of context, but say you've got multiple classes, one shouldn't be too tightly linked to the other. So there shouldn't be loads of references to that other class. It shouldn't be that that real strict dependency that if you suddenly took one apart from the other, it would just fail, that that kind of thing. Mm. But the idea is with the high cohesion is that when they do come together, you get 
you know, maximized effect and they work really well together. So the idea is that you can't completely remove coupling because that's the whole point of um, software is that different files and different sections of code come together to produce a, an application. So the idea is that you completely remove it, but you, you do want to keep it to an absolute minimum. Um, and I kind of said that Coding Ice does that and looking at it, it doesn't at all. But yeah. like I say, the helper functions, I still, you know, stand by that they are they're pretty good. And I, I, I started taking them out of the, the Coding Ice base and started using them without it. And they work really well. But the, the actual core code is 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 not at all. Which so, ones uh, did you take out? Uh, I think I used the like the date helper, um, the maybe the URL helper. I think, and the I think is there a HTML helper as well. I think I took those out, and I started doing a um, like a bit of a blog item on it. But I'm having a few problems with connecting to my database at the moment, which is embarrassing. But I will <laughs> define uh, the problem though. What is the problem? Is it this, a, your, is it this is your problem? SSH thing? Is this digital well, ocean? Basically, Ed said, make sure you store all your details on one computer. Uh, so I did, and obviously now my iMac's broke, and I don't oh, actually know my details. Oh, you numpty. <laughs> so, Last, uh, lastpass.com is yeah, the yeah, best yeah. thing. You mean LastPass? LastPass. Thank you. Last yeah. pass. Last, last pass. Can I, can I just say, Michael, as well, I'm very impressed with your restraint on the reply to that comment. As well, it was, it's quite a strongly worded comment, isn't it, from old Jeff? Um, and, uh, yeah, like, with, with your track record, I thought you would have got, like, hunted him down. And, and, Is this yeah. Jeffrey well, Way? Or we no, no. Jeff? <laughs> to be Jeff. fair, I think Ed kind of, like, preempted it, and he kind of called me, I think, to try and calm me down. Yeah, I, I thought, uh, well, he's going to do something he regrets, so I, I, I gave him a text saying, be warned. Yeah. Yeah, and you're sitting down, like just sit yeah. down, take some deep breaths. Yeah. I've got and something think about what you want to tell do. you. But yeah, I was tempted yeah. to praise. Yeah. That's but, a, uh, yeah, I kind of thought, uh, well, yeah, a very strongly new... worded message that one. Yeah, Mike, this is the new this? mature I'm me. I'm trying to find the thread. When was it? Uh, uh, it's... Yeah, if you go to the three devs and maybe website and then click on the the page for last week's episode, delving into code igniter. It was a bit of a. Uh, Bit of an eye opener because before when we had like four listeners, you could kind of say anything you wanted and you get away with it. It kind of re- made me realize now that I actually really have to do my homework before you say anything or like you get yeah. pulled apart. Well, and the thing is, is like I'm fine being wrong. I think it's great to yeah. own up, yeah. you know. Yeah. And this is what's nice about this podcast, you know. We do want feedback, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. negative or positive because it's going to make yeah. us better developers. That's, yes. you know, that's the great thing. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So have you got any picks? You haven't got any picks there, Mick? You've let us down there. God. No picks. Sorry about wow. that. Wow. I'm going to make up for it with a stupid amount of picks because I've been really sad this week. Nice. Um, I have given sent out a list on good old Skype. Uh, the first one is mailcatcher.me. And this is awesome. I spoke about this last year and I had to work on it again this uh, week. Uh, essentially what it does is it sets up a local SMTP server. Uh, like a web and it goes on a port so you, what you do is you say to your PHP mail application or like stuff like Swift Mailer please use this SMTP my local server instead of going out into the real world and what this allows you to do then is actually send emails locally and view them in the web browser as if they were normal uh, emails so you don't have to go through I'm sure what we've done is our great thing of sending it to ourselves etc What's the kind of setup time on this, if you want to go down this route? Uh, it takes, I mean, I, I set up with a Vagrant installation at the moment, but yeah. you can just set it up. I mean, it, it's it's no time at all. It's a Ruby gem, so it's, it's written in Ruby. But, um, yeah, you could just, I mean, if you go to their website, you can see how they set up in PHP, um, and it really is great. And it just saves so much time with fact of, because normally what you're doing with emails is you're sending them. You have to remember to, you know, maybe send them, you know, re, rename the actual um you know, what the two addresses and stuff like that. Maybe you BC yourself in, but this is great for just development and being able to test that you're sending it to the right person and how they look and stuff. Yeah. So I definitely recommend that. Wow. What is that? Sounds like a toilet flush. That is a bit wrong. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. So the second one is faveicon.co.uk. Um, I don't know about you guys, but fave icons are, you know, hip and fresh, you know? They've been around for years, but I needed to do one this week and I had a PNG and all I did is it literally was go on Google and I found this and it did the, did the uh, yeah. job for me really well. Um, it creates it. Yeah, because there used to be a 
sorry, there used to be a, a really good um, plug-in for Photoshop that used to do that, but it doesn't work with the latest version, does it? I have no idea. I didn't know there was actually. Oh, that. right, yeah, there was There was a plugin that I used for years, and then um, they upgraded my Photoshop at work, and then, it, yeah, all of a sudden it didn't work. Now it's not supported in CS6 now, which is a bit of a Have they a not updated it or anything? That's really annoying. I don't um, think so, no. Oh. Let me have a look. Um, um, and then I've got a Google Talk as my third pick. Uh this is this is a weird one. It's Simon Singh, and it's the Simpsons and their mathematical secrets. Uh, it's a little bit sad, a little bit geeky, but it's quite interesting how much. So the the writers behind the Simpsons and Futurama are math geeks. I mean, really, really hardcore math geeks. And there's a lot of math in the Simpsons, like behind the scenes and stuff. Do you so, mean math? Maths because we're English. Math, maths. Yes, math, you maths. mean maths. <laughs> maths, 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 maths. Yeah. maths. Do you Is guys it, want to say it like yeah. maths or something? Maths. Like being southern. Ha ha ha. Funny guy. Um, <laughs> And then I've got another one called uh, php2python.com. And this is essentially a great uh, reference for, I know what it is to do it in PHP. I need to know how to do it in Python. I think there should be more websites like this. I don't know if any of you found any other websites like this where, you know, I know how to do it in PHP. I want to do it in JavaScript. I know there was that website which was rewriting PHP functions in JavaScript, but kind of doing it in the way for that language. I think it's quite a cool concept to, to do. Well, that's yeah, pretty was, nice. It was uh, there was a classic ASP one that I used a while ago. Um, uh, what you did PHP to classic ASP because I think they're no, really. It was it was just like a a, a cheat sheet with like you, you it's got down your left hand side all the functions that you've got in in ASP that you used to use in and, and everything. And then it just gives you the PHP equivalent on the other side. All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Fraser. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, just to interject. I was thinking about you the other day, not in an inappropriate way, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just saw in the news that uh, Mumsnet got hacked. I was thinking Fraser will be devastated. That, that's the site you go on quite a bit, isn't it? Mumsnet. Was it Mumsnet? No, it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> Might be some nice <laughs> pictures <laughs> flying around, though. Mumsnet. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. Mumsnet. I thought that was the one you said, like, now and again, like, if Stack didn't have, like, a good article. Oh, you no. Um, oh, what is it called? It was... was not Mumsnet? Yeah, I know the one you mean exactly. No, it wasn't Mumsnet. It was... Oh no! I, I don't even think the website's around now. Um, I think we tried to. Um, I think we actually tried to Google it the last time, like the first episode. Yeah, we could find it. Yeah. What's that? Oh man! But we did That's find that a website. A what was it? A band website. I can't remember. It was on. No, it doesn't ring so, a bell. Yeah, you don't, it doesn't ring a bell, does it? I'm sure. Brilliant. So, uh, go back. tell us more about your picks. Uh, uh, <laughs> and my final pick <laughs> is from a podcast from the PHP Town Hall podcast that uh, was released last week, and it's called yeah. Vert PHP. Um, and the idea here is that it's similar to it's pretty much a clone of virtualenv for, for Python. And what that does, is it allows you to isolate your different PHP environments on your on one on your one in, uh, development box. Uh, normally, what you do is you do something like you know Vagrant, VirtualBox, and set up some VMs and stuff. But that can be quite heavy, especially on like your MacBook Airs and stuff with you know battery supply, uh, battery you know support and lifetime. So what this does then instead is it just isolates them individually and you're able to set up, you know, different pair ex- extensions, different Perl extensions and stuff and be able to use it and just switch between them a the lot in different in different um, development, envir- uh, development environments. So that's pretty interesting. Nice. I like their website as well. It's, it's quite yeah, it's quite a spiffy website, isn't it? I like the, I like yeah. their I like their little tagline, one box, multiple elephants. I really want a yeah. PHP elephant. Really? Yeah. I just no, they all look really tatty, like they've been bought in a charity shop. Like, I've have. never seen a good one. <laughs> no, been bought in a charity shop. Oh dear. <laughs> nice. Good picks, man. Not a problem. Um, so I guess we want to talk about our. Well, it's like thirty-seven minutes in as well. Wow. Um, yeah. Talk about our what's it? Our topic of the week, which is uh, classic ASP and why you should use it. <laughs> Am I right in thinking that or? I would yeah. love to do one on that. It's, That'd it's be awesome. Laravel. Sure. It's Laravel. <laughs> Michael Budd approach to. Um, do you know I haven't used it so much. What's it called? ASP. Bloody heck! That was a really embarrassing time for your brain to just go blank. <laughs> like three seconds after I heard what you said, classic ASP. Blimey. Classic ASP. Yeah. I still see jobs like looking for it. Classic ASP developers to be. Well, because there's code bases, yeah. isn't there? I mean, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. Like, these code bases that you know, big big code bases like the whole thing with. Facebook using PHP still, once you've got a big code base, you really have to support the language. 
You have to support I can't, I can't imagine Facebook using anything else, to be fair. Like, even if they had their time again, what would they... Oh, they would use something like Python or Scala so. or... Yeah, they'd probably use a static language, wouldn't they, now? I think how big they are. I, I don't think... I think I think d- dynamic languages are great for views and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but then, like, for the actual business logic, probably static languages, especially for, like, you know... Uh, that's what they're doing now, aren't they? They're adding static typing. Well, type hinting yeah, yeah. into it using hack. But, um, yeah, so going on a complete tactical tangent there. But, yeah, this week's yeah, episode sorry. is on Laravel. Um, and I've put some show notes together. Uh, but before I go and just start yabbering on i just suppose go through each one each of you and just say what your opinion of laravel is and what you think of it and yeah so mickey laravel when i say laravel to you what do you think um i think of two o'clock in the morning following a night out with you guys but uh <laughs> other than that i kind of i guess i moved on to that following code igniter when um we were all working together and um at first, I again, my natural reaction to anything that I don't understand is anger and rage, and uh, I yeah, I didn't start off too well with it um, because mainly because I just knew coding was like the back of my hand. I didn't like the idea of having to go back to documentation to look up stuff, but actually, you know, having used it and got to know it, uh, you know, I really do like it. Um, it's it's a lot more stripped back, and like you say, one of your criticisms of coding was that it has too much in there that it tried to deliver everything. And Laravel doesn't really do that. Um, and I guess now with Compose as well, that's you know even more the case. Um, but yeah, I've only really used it uh, for a couple of websites when I was working with you guys. Um, but yeah, I got on with it pretty well, to be fair. But I didn't use a lot of the, the more cool stuff that I know you guys use, like, um, uh, I'm trying to think now, some like the, uh, like the database stuff that you've got. Um, what's it called? Eloquent. Yeah. Eloquent. Eloquent. Yeah, so um, I don't think I used it to its full potential, but um, yeah, I think if I was in a point where I was building websites from scratch now, I would go down Laravel route, definitely. Okay, and how about you, Luis? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm definitely um, definitely a fan of Laravel. It's 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 pretty much the flavour of the month, well, flavour of not just the month, it's the flavour of PHP overall at the moment, isn't it? Everywhere you look on Twitter and, and online and stuff, any PHP stuff is all very, very Lar- Laravel weighted. So it's very hard as a as a developer to not pay attention to it um, on any level. Um, I haven't, I, I've probably, I, I dabbled a bit with Laravel 3 towards the end of working with you guys and I must admit, I I really like I I really like Laravel three. Actually, I loved working with that. I think Ed gave me uh, a DVD series that Jeffrey Way did ages ago to uh, to get me introduced to it, and and I really enjoyed it. And um, and then yeah, the moment more recently, I, my my little snippet site that I made was my first little dabble with Laravel four. And again, I thought it was it was lovely to work with. Uh, I don't really know what what more. I mean, what what feedback to give on it? I think I think it's great. I just it's it's a bit. I mean, Mike says it's not very weighty, but I th- I think it is a bit. It's a bit weighty for anything that I need to use. There's the the code base. Once you get it, once you get it all downloaded, is is quite substantial. So yeah, <laughs> that's all right. And then Fraser. Yeah, I. I- I actually agree with with Lewis about how the weight of the code stuff because I'm I'm not as experienced in Laravel as as you are Ed, um, but it does feel a lot a lot heavier than than code ignore. and it's it's maybe just because uh, I don't know it as well as as you and uh, I'm not too sure but yeah it, it does feel a lot more complicated than code igniter um, and then yeah my kind of experience getting into into Laravel was it was picking up a project that you started and then somebody else had worked on it in the office. Um, and it was a little bit of a, a complex one because I think you'd, you'd used Eloquent and then this other guy had used Fluent and then I wanted to go into it using Eloquent because I'd been working with Silverstrike previously. Um, that's the framework that I'd been working on before that and that kind of, it, it, the way that, is that what we're calling it? The object relational uh-huh. ORM or whatever? Yep, is that, is that, yeah, yep. that's what we're calling it. Yep, you know, down with all the uh, the lingo. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the Silverstripe, Silverstripe kind of follows follows that model as well. So I was trying to do it in in eloquent as you had been and then i was told that actually no we should be doing it in fluent and then that kind of felt like a step back and it's i've i'm yet to get completely 100 percent comfortable in 
to into my own style kind of thing I, I guess is the word with with laravel um but I, I do thoroughly enjoy using it and I'm, I'm like i said before i'm back working on it now so it's it's yeah it's it's given me the insight that i need so aside for like for the listeners and stuff so eloquent is um so they've got all these funny names you've got artisan laravel eloquent fluence so eloquent is the object relational mapper and what that does in essence is it maps the objects say like you would have a post and then you would have a table that is called post and these two would then map together and it would do all the magic for you there so and then the relationships and then fluent is the active record pattern that you'll you'll probably very commonly you'll 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 be familiar with in the code igniter world uh with their database access uh, so under the scene hood eloquent does use fluent and you you know you can use you you normally do use fluent inside of eloquent but yeah you you can use them on the well you can use fluent on its own uh but typically yeah you do use eloquent just because it provides you with that mapping that us developers kind of like um I suppose the first thing I would like to do, similar to what uh, Mickey did last week, if it's all right with you guys, is just go for a bit of the history of Laravel, because I think that's kind of a good way to see why, you know, the reasons why and why it came about and how it came about and yep. right, and what's included yep. in the stuff. So um, Laravel 1, so we're on 4 now, but Laravel 1, I mean, normally if you've got, you know, the fourth edition, you would think to yourself, oh, it must be years and years old, but Laravel 1 came back, in, it came out in 2011. So only three years, really. Um in the, and so, uh, aside from that, a bit bit further, uh, a bit earlier on was in the mid two thousand and nine, uh, PHP five three came out, and that was great because it introduced namespaces, it introduced anonymous functions, closures, and it really did start. It br- brightened up the PHP world to say, "Wow, we've got all this cool stuff that other languages like Ruby has and stuff like that." Uh, however, the problem was is it's it's now adopting those things, so not all the frameworks were looking to change so quickly. So, you know, these were added into the language, but all these frameworks, all these code bases and stuff, similar to the whole classic ASP thing, was that, you know, it's hard to change code and to, instead, they wanted to support, you know, older versions of PHP, you know, like a shared host that was on 5.2, which is so good with Code Igniter or 5.1. So there was kind of this disconnect, you know, where we've, we've got all this new stuff, but everyone's still using the old stuff because of support, which is always a horrible thing, but that's unfortunately part of life. So, uh, all developers did love Codeigniter, and that included Taylor Otwell, the developer of Laravel, uh, because of its comprehensive documentation, like we talked about last week, its simplicity to get stuff done. Uh, and, you know, it was great because as a PHP programmer, what we were going on banging on about last week was that you can download a zip, unzip, you know, download a zip file, unzip it, and pretty much you can get up and running very quickly with a couple of configurations options. Um, but what Taylor Otwell had was there was a couple of things at, missing in Code Igniter that he wanted to include, uh, that he wanted part of it, and he thought to himself, well, "Let's write my own framework." And one of the things was build uh, in built-in authentication stuff like you know because these are typical things you know that you know you log in, you log out users, you remember users, you know, and stuff like that. And also was closure routing or routing, sorry. So you know the fact that I mean one thing that you, when you first come into Laravel in their documentation and in their examples, their quick start is the fact they use closures for their roots, similar to Sinatra and Flask and Slim, all these different frameworks juggling between languages. Um, you know, because that was one thing in Code Igniter where it, it is great the fact that you can look at a URL and see exactly where it's going, but it's quite restrictive. I don't know if you've ever felt that, that it, you have to go through this, you know, you have to have a controller. It could be directories, you could be going down directories, but you have to have a controller, a method, and then any of the arguments. So I don't know if you've ever felt that being a bit restrictive and then going into Laravel. I actually, the, the, something that when I first started using Laravel, the thing that I thought restrictive was the fact that you did have to declare roots. So you couldn't just go and create a, a controller and automatically have the root, the root there for you. So that, that was a big thing for me when I first started using Laravel that was actually really quite frustrating. So you but, can actually do yeah. it. You can no. actually set it in and say, uh, I want to, it will automatically generate the roots for you based on the controller. Oh. Is that, is that oh, okay? okay. The way the way I've made my framework is I've made it so that I can declare I can declare roots and it will look for those first. So it will look for a root and then match that to a controller or method. And then if it doesn't find that, then it will just look for the controller and method. All right, because because that, that um, beautiful. So what it does is it actually you can just say to it, you know, this root, and then you specify the root, say users, and then instead of specifying like a, a method, you can just say, please use the resource controller or something, and it will work out and it will say use this controller and everything inside there. Um, so, so yeah, so, so these are the two things he wanted to add, really. He wanted to build in authentication and closer routing or routing. And it was released in mid-2011. 
uh, also included part of this, he went really did go gung ho. Was eloquent RM uh, localization models and relation uh, models and relationships within models with eloquent uh, routing through closures. So there was no MVC yet. Uh, that was one thing. So there was no MVC. It was all using closures at this time. Uh, caching sessions views. Uh, no template in language yet. Uh, you were extendable through modules and libraries, and you had the typical code igniter style form and HTML helpers. Um, I like the chat that's going on. Oh dear, it's really hard. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Okay. So yeah. So uh, again. So that was that was in Laravel one, and then Laravel two. Um, what are we doing? Where did you find those? They're like the Just hidden the man dancing with the magic. rubber ring on with <laughs> his wiener out. <laughs> well, we do a lot of Skype chat at work, so I know all the hidden emoticons. But um, yeah, we'll put them in show notes for anyone who wants uh, who wants that. Sorry, Ed. Sorry. That's all right. So Laravel oh, 2 Ed. then came out probably only six months after that, and that actually included controller support, blade templating, and our good old IOC, the inversion of control container, which I'm sure that's probably oh. one thing where you, yeah, you lot kind of then think, oh dear. Um, but we'll fast forward to February 2012, and this is when I got into it and where a lot of buzz happened with Jeffrey Way making his article, etc. Um, and that was Laravel 3 and that focused on unit testing it included the artisan command line interface it included database migrations events and then it rethought um, uh, libraries and modules into bundles um, and I remember vividly a in the office when we were working together a .NET magazine that had an article about Laravel 3 in it I think it was from Jeffrey Way and that kind of was the start of like wow this framework's kind of taken over the PHP landscape um, and it used under the hood Symfony components. And I think the nice thing Laravel 3 was the fact it had the same philosophy as Code Igniter, where you unzip it, you can copy it to places, you know, you can easily FTP in and stuff like that. Can we just uh, take a minute to talk about the IOC container thing? Because I think I've like, got, me, I have got a bit on it. Have. Yeah, All I right, have no got worries. a bit on it. I will go, okay. we will go through it. Because yeah, I think yeah. that's, that is probably one of the things where people get unhinged and it kind of yeah so then we had so with laravel 3 that started that up and everything and then in may 2013 a he he released he had been working on it for a couple of months before where he actually a lot uh probably immediately after laravel 3 was released uh a complete rewrite uh of laravel and it was a code named illuminate and it was a significant upgrade and it featured different architecture for the framework and the core and amazing extendability. And the idea was that it used Composer for dependency management and auto loading. Um, everything was components and packages to be integrated. Um, and it targeted the developers with SSH access. So that was the thing now, you know, we, we've gone from the fact that really with Composer and stuff, you need to install the packages and there's a lot to install. Um, so, you know, dragging it up and down with FTP or FTP can be a bit of a pain. Um, but with Laravel 4, you, it included database seeding. So you could be able to see database. Mic- so you have a migration. So a migration to you is, you know, this is what a user table should look like, the schema should. And then I can seed it with some data saying, you know, we've got Mickey there. We've got, you know, Lou, we've got Fraser. It had message queues, which were great. So it had, provided this abstraction layer it has on top of message queuing, such as um, Q, uh, Rabbit Q, uh, MQ and stuff like that. It had built-in mail support, and it provided a really nice, succinct uh, API to Swift Mailer. And it had even more power in Eloquent with soft deletes. So you know we've got typically, this is one thing I never used to do until I started working with you guys, was soft deletes, whereby you delete a, a, a record just by a flag, you know, being true or false. Uh, and it also included scopes within uh, object or mapping of the Eloquent um, framework. And I don't know why I said that way. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so that is kind of the history of where we are now with Laravel. So there's four releases. The new one is using Composer. Yes, so Mickey, what were you going to say about good old IOC? Well, I was just going to say, really, I mean, I don't think it's that people don't like it. I think it's that people don't understand it. Yeah, and, I mean, um, definitely. I definitely think that's the case. Would it be, like would it, a, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Just to just to inject, Mickey, would it be? Would you consider it a fair observation that? Maybe maybe Laravel is is more aimed towards the advanced developer, and and maybe some some less able developers maybe feel a bit intimidated by it. Perhaps I I would think that what's happened is it's kind of like it's because using, of things like the IOC container. It's, yeah, it's, it's using well, it's using a lot of concepts like design patterns and stuff that a lot of web developers haven't seen before, especially if you've just been doing script websites. I mean, if you've just been doing the includes at the top top and bottom and everything. 
you come from that, it's a very different workflow. And because PHP now has all these mod cons with closures and stuff like that, there's a lot of boilerplate, a lot of like you know stuff that you need to know before really delving into Laravel and understanding the code. I suppose. Well, this is this is what I think because you've got a whole a whole different level of appreciation for it than the rest of us, and I think experience overall must be a massive factor in that. I mean, you're. I'm only I don't know nearly three years into my career, and I don't know about the other guys, but you you know you you've been studying this stuff for a long time, so you probably know the things to look for more more than maybe maybe I would. And I think that is kind of a running theme of this podcast series, really, isn't it? That you know, like how important is it to understand the tools that you're using? Um, I mean, you, you're right that probably a beginner developer probably could, you know, if they follow the instructions, you know. Um, closely then they probably could build a site using laravel framework but you know again how important is it for them to understand that and how yeah, important well, yeah, well, to... where, that's exactly where i where what i mean is they yeah. could build it but how much would they understand the actual yeah, yeah. because that, that that for me is crucial yeah and i guess it is like how much weight you put on that but um i don't know what do you think fraser um sorry i, I would it was away from my computer for a second. That's why I missed the, the bulk of that conversation. That's why I was not saying anything. No worries. What about you then, Ed? Well, I mean, what is your verdict on that? I, I agree with you completely. I do. Um, I think this is the right way, though, where we're going. I think yeah. it's making PHP into more of a professional language. Um, it's being used for a lot of professional things now, like Facebook and stuff. Uh, so, it, you know, it, and it has the tools now to be able to do it. And I think, I think down the line, people will appreciate Laravel because it's going, it's bringing all these concepts into the mainstream. You See, know? I seem to remember hearing you say one time that you didn't like it when people tried to make PHP. Oh, software. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. They shouldn't. But it, it, the right. fact of the matter is, it's happening. Um, right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's yeah. fine for me to say, you know, oh, yeah, no one should be changing PHP. But at the end of the day, people are still using it. I mean, companies like Facebook are, re, you know, making languages on top of PHP. So to yeah. do it the right way, though, you know, I, I want to get to a PHP code base and I want to know that I'm doing it the right way. You yeah. Know, instead of just going, oh, well, it's PHP, I can kind of do it the wrong way, you know, and not worry about it. Yeah. Um, so the things that I like about Laravel, and then we can get into, you know, these are the, these are the key points that when I, I take away from Laravel that I find it, and we'll, we will then talk about the IOC and facades because those two are massive topics and uh, good old sure. Laravel, uh, is expressive code. So it, promote, it, it does promote the usage of clean, expressive code uh, throughout the web application, but it still remains PHP code. So if you look at a, a Laravel, uh, you know, like maybe just a Laravel class um, and you're accessing it, maybe the roots class, and you'll see and you'll look at the examples like the quick start and stuff, you'll see it's very expressive, very uh, understandable. It's very easy to be able to delve in and see it. There's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes, which confuses people with like the static and stuff. But I do still go by the fact that I think Laravel classes look more pretty than Code Igniter classes. What, because uh, of the staticness? It, it, it's not, yeah. So it is static, but it's not static. So under the hood, it, it's not static. That's a, that is a thing, <laughs> yeah. So another thing is convention over configuration. So the idea is similar to Code Igniter, but it's probably gone up a bit more, is that it's ratcheted up. You know, you're going to have different environments. You know, you're going to have a production environment. You're going to have a developer environment, stuff like that. I, I do love the built-in authentication, particularly the HTTP basic one. So, you know, you can quickly just guard, like, say, this route, these routes need to be guarded by this quick, you know, authentication. You know, say you have, like, a stats page and you just quickly want, you know, to make it so that page has authentication, but you don't really care about, you know, making a login form, etc. You just want it to be quick with the basic auth. So that's great. Uh, then it's the, uh, the eloquent thing with the CRUD systems that's easy, the relationships, the pivot tables that you can automatically work with, the lazy and eager loading and the timestamp updating so you can automatically create um, create at, you know, updated at ta- uh, columns. Um, yeah. Then the routing with filters is amazing because I have my router, you know, my root.php or roots.php and I have an admin section and I can literally wrap up and say, look, any pattern that matches this field, you know, admin and starts with admin and then it goes in, or maybe I can even do it with closures and actually just embed them. Like you've probably seen some of my examples I did with um, the projects I've been doing. Uh, I, I did before was, you know, and you're able to say this needs to be before that any of these routes is here. I need to be able to call auth and make sure you're logged in and you can s- clearly see it there. It's not like every class needs to have, I'm sure we've seen it in, you know, in your construct for every controller, it needs to be this login required or you've done something like that. So this is all in one place, which is great. 
Um, and then finally, on uh, well, not finally, but on the actual application side of it is the events. So, sim- you know, like Cody and I had the hooks, which kind of were great, it were great for the time, and it is great to be able to hook into each different bit of the actual system, but those are quite um, fixed. This events allow you to, well, the Laravel system itself automatically fires out events, which you can then what you do is you then attach yourself to, so it's the publish subscribe model. You know, it publishes an event, you subscribe to those events, and then you're able to call your own code. Um, you can also create your own ones. So stuff like maybe it also did that. The great way of doing that, the reason to do that is it decouples code because it allows you to say like, if a user is registered, it, uh, maybe I've got a user registered event, and if it's successfully registered, it will send this, it will fire this event. Now I will register or subscribe a method, an event called which will send out an email to you know, this user, and I can just register it in there. I don't have to include it inside of the actual code for adding a user because it's nothing to do with adding a user. This is just an event that happens on the side of it. Or maybe it even adds it to the queue abstraction that Laravel provides you. Um, and then finally on the, um, not finally, sorry, I keep saying finally, uh, but you've got unit testing. That was one thing in Laravel 3 that happened, and I think that this needs to be beaten into everyone's kind of like the web game now is that, Unit testing is really important. Testing is really important. And Laravel provides you with a good, good base to start with. And also really good examples of the fact that pretty much everything in Laravel is unit tested. Did um, Jeffrey Way have much to do with that? I know his, his book uh, is based on... He did. He didn't. He, he's just had a, he's had a really good mainstream kind of like... I, I'm, his book, I bought it the day it came out, Laravel Testing Decoded. And it's a yeah. shame that really it's only directed at Laravel. And really, it's just a good book for anyone who wants to get into testing in PHP. Yeah. Um, but that's when the IOC container comes in with mocking and stuff. And then the other one is Artisan, which is the command line tool. So, you know, like um, though you were saying, you know, you've made a tool on the command line and that is similar in, in vain to Laravel's one because it's such a useful tool. And also now with uh, the updates in 5, I think it's 4.2 or 4.1, uh, you can have SSH access. Now, I don't know if you've seen the fact that you can actually run commands on the, com- on the uh, like script SSH commands. I don't know if right. you've seen it. So if you have a look at this, I'll show you, show you this. Check this out. How cool is this? It's great for a uh, audio podcast, but what we're showing yeah. here is the uh, <laughs> SSH um, documentation. And again, the documentation, I do like the documentation for Laravel as well. Um, oh, that's and, pretty cool. And you're able then to hear what it's showing. Is It's saying, on the server, I want to run, I want to CD into my www directory, and I just want to do a git pull and I'm pulling the new content. You can also say, oh, I want to SSH into staging and stuff like this. So it's a re- And then also it does your SFTP downloads and uploads and stuff like that, which yeah, is that's quite really cool. cool. It's very, very cool. Um, and they put a lot of work into that. And it, that saves a lot of time. I, I, I found the one thing that saved me a lot of time was the tailing the remote logs. So it's able to automatically, so normally I would have to SSH into the box and tail my, you know, the log file that's currently activity going or something, or maybe an error log file. Here I'm able to shift through Artisan or Artisan. I don't know, is it Artisan or Artisan? I don't I'd really say know. Artisan. Artisan, Artisan, yeah. Artisan yeah. Um, You know, I, I would have tail into, uh, you know, the production box and I'm able easily to be able to just grab that file and it will just do it through through this generic interface, which is great than having to mess around with SSH, you know, uh, log, you know SSH connections and stuff. Is um is mocking uh, like a test fixture type thing or is yeah mocking is test fixtures so oh, okay, that's yeah. when IOC comes into its own because um so IOC container I don't know if we've explained it before on the podcast don't think we have we talked about some sort of tirade that was going on on Twitter at some point uh, yes. but we haven't actually gone into the topic itself so inversion of control container really it just manages I've got a shameless plug I've got a blog post on it I'll put it in the show notes which kind of explains the container and how facades work but in its general sense what it is is it's just a repository for managing class dependencies um, you know you say to it I want you to give me a user class and it will use either a closure or just call and create a new user for you you think that that in between is probably you're like well I could just statically you know um, you know statically just say new user but what happens if you want to replace the user class or make a new extended class or maybe you want to mock that class? Having this in between, this kind of re- registry that you say, please give me this, what this allows you to do is replace it. And it says, you know, for this call, I want to, instead of you grabbing the real database, the eloquent database, I want you to grab my mock. And what that mock is, is actually then going to just say, look, you know, you're going to have to get, a, you know, select, you know, these queries, limit it at this and stuff like that and hit these methods. So it allows you to, you know, to do those things. Um, that is not possibly uh, possible easily without um, without the IOC with just static classes. 
Um, another thing is that dependency injection, so because they're injected at runtime instead of statically, they allow for greater flexibility as dependency implementations can be swapped out easily. Um, and that means mocked. Um, also, the thing that got me very, which was very cool when I first started using the IOC was automatic resolution. Um, so the the, depend, the actual dependency injection, what it's able to do is you're able to say, uh, say in your controller, maybe you've got a user and you've got a user controller and your user controller uses a user repository that is pretty much just an object relational mapper class in Eloquent. And it may need to use maybe uh, so another thing, you know, maybe like a date uh a day provider or something. What you can do is you can just type in and say, I would like the user repository and then as user, and then it will depend on that and say in the constructor, it will give you, you get through the constructor that instead of it just being available to you at any time. And what this allows you then to do is it allows you then to um, easily mock things again. And this is all when it comes to just mocking and testing. I don't know if I'm giving it enough credit how good it is. And I've got another moon. Oh dear. Yeah, it's hard to concentrate, isn't it? Terrible. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> I got to read this. Um, yeah. What's next? So, um, so, uh, so have we got a quiz. We have got a quiz, but there was a couple of other yes. things. So the rest, okay. you know, rest. Um, what that is another great thing is that it allows you to easily make resources um, allows you to easily say you know this user and it will provide you with all the methods that you need and it will easy it, without having to create all of the methods such as like in because I think Phil Sturger made a good rest class or uh, controller inside of coding Nighter, and this is kind of the equivalent but done better because it's got newer technologies and stuff cool okay yeah yeah um, so I, I suppose I've, I've been yabbing on there and I probably haven't given it enough due and I've probably said some stuff that's probably a bit wrong uh, because that's a finger. What the hell do people... <laughs> what, can I just ask? I actually? think you're on the same website. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on skyformoticons.com? Uh, maybe. Ed, what is uh, Taylor's sort of background? Because I'm just like reading about the Laravel philosophy and it's saying, like, you know, he, he's looked at other... He's a, do- he's a .NET, he was a .NET developer. I was going to ask, was yeah. it? Okay, all right. He was yeah. a .NET developer, so he came from a static language, you know, like Java and stuff, and he liked PHP because um, he found it so hard in his own time. I think this is, he, he, he explains it, I think, quite a bit in his the podcast he did the first one on PHP Town Hall. Uh, yeah. And, you know, he wanted just a language that he could have cheap hosting pretty much, and PHP was the great for that. But he realised, you know, PHP were doing things a bit wrong. But he, he first started with Co-Nighter and loved it, like we loved it. But he's just expanded yeah. on it now to make it as it is today. Okay. So the um, the inversion of control container, that's quite a popular um, design pattern then. Oh, yeah, because uh, it's – I don't know if you've looked in Java web uh, frameworks like Spring. I've not as yet, no. That that revolves around an IOC. Okay. Um, you know, you'll, you'll find that when you want to start testing things like this, it is a very good pattern to use. It's a very good idea to use. Okay. Okay, and um, so I think we're probably time for a quiz. Um, now, having a quiz just on Laravel is a bit of a pain. So what I've kind of cheated a bit, and I've kind of done a bit of Laravel, and then also a bit of just general PHP knowledge. Boom. Okay? Mm-hmm. Is everyone ready? Yes. Yes. How, 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 are, we, how are we answering? Are we going to go around in circles? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, good question. I think we'll go, I'll say Mickey Star, uh, and Mickey Star, then Fraser, and then Lewis, and each of okay. you get to... Yeah, and then we'll, we'll rotate. So, Sweet feet. what this is it? What is an artisan? Uh, okay, in the strictest sense of the word, it's in like a definition. A, what is an yeah? What is an artisan? It's, isn't it like a like a almost like a a really superb craftsman, someone who's like really at the top of his game, kind of thing. Okay, and Fraser. Oh, are we talking in relation to Laravel or just, oh, just what is an just artisan? A, yeah, just what is an artisan? Not, not, oh, okay, a, not, yeah. yeah, it's like someone who's. Yeah, uh, just intense attention to detail and is completely hundred percent skilled. Like a uh, yeah, I mean, like Honestly. like Michael <laughs> at baby making. Oh, dear. And Lewis, yeah, that was, I was going to say like a perfectionist. Okay, I think you're all right. Yeah, so it's a worker in a skilled trade, and it's Boom. especially one that involves making things with, by hand. So there you go. Boom. Okay, here's a funny one. With PHP. Art Lang and Fraser can start this. This uh, do this one first. 
Are language keywords case sensitive in PHP? <laughs> language keywords are they what case sensitive? What do you mean sensitive? by language keyword? So keywords such as like function, if, while. Uh, oh, that, oh right, no, sorry. they're not. They're not. No. Okay, uh, no. Lewis. I would say they are, but but I can't get on Google quick enough. So. Okay, and then uh, Nikki. I would say they almost certainly are. Yeah. Okay, it's Fraser. They are. No. They are case insensitive. You Boom. can do function whatever you like. Really? Yep. Absolutely. Oh, uh, and then Lewis, you start with this one. Describe the three ways you can comment in PHP. Um, backslash, uh, forward slash, forward slash, uh, forward slash star, and then star forward slash. Uh, and there's that that last one that is going to be the pain. I I guess the um the H T the H T M L way of doing it probably wouldn't work. <laughs> I don't know. Is there? There's probably a PHP function that does it, but I don't know. I don't know the third one. Okay, and then Michael. Oh man, you've completely stumped me here. I mean, the only thing I could possibly think of, and I've never tried it, but I can't imagine it would work, is something like hashtag. But um, I have no idea. No How idea. about you, Fraser? Yeah, I was going to say the hash, or as American people say, the pound sign. You both get a point. Really? Yeah. It, it, so what they've done is they've borrowed from C, C++, and shell coding. So you can do all these three. Yeah. I so, was hoping you weren't going to get that one, Michael, because I kind of saw, I didn't 100% know, but I was like 70 or 80% that... I didn't have a clue. I was thinking like HC access and that kind of stuff that, you know, yeah. you can do that, but... God, yeah. yeah. So this is going to be a bit of a code one, but I'll just explain it. So say I've got a dollar var, so it's just a variable, and yeah. it, I assign a string, literal, just a string of zero, so the, the, the new, numeral zero. Yeah. So if this is used in an if condition, and I think the person to say this one first is probably, is it Mick? I think you, it's gone round to me again, yeah. Right you. Okay, so if I use this in an if condition, would it be yeah. a true or would it be a false? Sorry, Ed, can you repeat that? I lost I lost audio for a sec then. Okay, so uh, you've got a dollar var, so it's just a normal variable, and I'm assigning the string literal zero, the number zero. And I'm saying, if you've used this, so if you use this in a as a you know as a predicate, really, in an if condition, would it be true or would it be false? Okay. So, uh, Mickey? I guess because it's not null, it would be true. So, I'll go with true. Okay, and then Lewis? I think false. So you think it would be false? Yeah. And Fraser? I also think it would be false. Okay, so yes, you're correct. It's one of those weird ones where the string literal of actual zero is a special case for a conversion to a Boolean, and it converts it to false. So even I think, though, I, think I, learned, I think I learned this the hard way. So mm. even, even though you think to yourself, oh, it's truthy because there's a value in it, it's one of those gotchas where zero actually will be false. Yeah, I thought I'd say oh, that because uh, Fraser's running away. With I it. had that. Issue. I, I I came across that many many a time on MU. It's a very <laughs> very annoying one. Um, so here's here's a composer question: How do you regenerate the auto load file from within Composer? So what's the command you have to use? And the first, the person to answer this will be Lewis. Composer dump auto load. And how about you, Fraser? I had no idea until Lewis has said that, but I'm going to guess <laughs> composer dump auto load. Oh, I, use, and, I use that one quite regularly. And <laughs> Mickey, I should have, I I should have asked Lewis first. Last it's week. what Lewis said. You yeah. all get a point, <laughs> yeah. but I think I think Lou deserves another point because. Whoa! Yeah, I'll, I'm happy with him having one. Um, but don't afraid of still winning. Um, okay, so this will be like a boss. <laughs> this will be Fraser answering this one. What does rest Make stand for? <laughs> oh what um rest <laughs> no. three two one answer yeah i i, I don't have no? the slightest idea how about you lou um really extremely strange thing sexual tension <laughs> how about you mickey oh um responsive uh Exciting! <laughs> I have no idea. I have it stands no idea. I for representational state transfer. It's a fancy word for the oh, of HTTP verbs we've got, and uh, it was actually so. Rest was actually a PhD thesis for someone, and they just discussed, you know, using these PHP verbs. And this moves on to our final one, 
And if no one gets this, so I'll just have to say Fraser is in the lead with five. Uh, then it's uh, there's four by Lou, and there's a three by Mickey. Um, I'm going to do a special. If you can get any, right, so we're going to do we're going to do a bonus round afterwards because it may be that we're going yes. to uh, draw. So okay. name the four common HTTP methods and what they are used for. So it will probably start with Fraser. Think? No, it's not Fraser. It's, it's Mickey, isn't it? Mickey, is it you? Yeah. Okay, uh, Mickey. So you mean like get? get. And what, what do they do? What What are their purpose? So you said get, and what is its purpose? Um, to send parameters via the URL. Um. So, kind so of. what would you normally use get for in a in a restful way? Um, I have no idea. Um, I, I have no idea. Uh, how about the other ones? So you've got you've got another three. Do you know any of the other ones? What they would use them for? It, in a restful context. In a restful context, you've got get. You've got other ones. You know what are they used for in that way? Uh, I, I I don't really know in that context. So I know get post. Um, uh, what else? Request. Patch. Patch. Patch is the same as another one. Pat, yeah, okay. patch and post. Sorry, um, I'm answering for other people here, aren't I? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all I know. I, I, to be honest, I, I can't really explain them either. Yeah. In 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 terms that it would make it understandable. Uh, Fra- Fraser's moments. Fraser, yeah. yeah. I was no, because it sounds too simple. I was just going to say, gets used to get parameters from the query string. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, what I mean, so, so I'll give the example. So with get, get is used in a restful way. So say you have a user, and you would get to show, and it, what it would do is it would get you, it would retrieve the user details from that. So it would be for say like a show page, right? You know, and then post. What would you use post for? Oh, I'm with you. So you're you're like matching it up to like crud. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So so get is read. Get would be read. Uh, post. Oh. Would, post would be create. Uh, edit would be patch and or delete put. would be delete so you got yeah you got put which was patch put. yeah <laughs> get put patch i don't well, think yeah. i said that yeah. question uh, <laughs> uh, and there's other one there's also two other ones that i have really no idea about and there's one called head and there's one called option well there you go nice. and i think fraser is actually no no because i think lou yeah i think lou stormed away with it there no no you're both you both <laughs> <laughs> on even so we have to make like a time yeah. even stevens um can we have a css one yeah oh all right okay uh <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> how oh okay i'm gonna have to google this but what are the parameters for a box shadow oh jesus and i want you to tell me oh boom i want you to tell me yes i want you to tell me the bo- the actual parameters that you use to make a a box shadow okay it's X, Y, then the spread, then the colour. Boom. Yeah, I think you're right there, actually. Yeah. Boom. Boom, oh. indeed. Yeah, he's got his H, the V, which is vertical. X, yeah, there you go. Sorry, Lou. Well, I was going to say, uh, they are whatever I use to copy and paste from CSS3G. <laughs> That's, That's exactly yeah. what I do as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Just for you. Well, I think that's oh. it. I think I think we've kind of bored our listeners to death. I I don't know if I've yeah. given Laravel enough. Maybe we have to go over it one other day when I'm a little less. I confused. great job as always, man. Good notes. Yeah, yeah, that's really for her. Really good. Good work. And uh, yeah, we we'd like some some more feedback from from listeners if they'd care to give it to us. Not you, Jeff. Um, <laughs> it, uh... No, it's, I like everything. No. All feedback. No, good it's good. Feedback. Even, yeah, even yeah. though it was Thanks, very Jeff. sternly worded, it's, it's always nice to hear that people are listening to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if you know, anybody fancies writing you know us a review, not you, Jeff, on iTunes, that would be fantastic. My, my concern is that that was a, a strongly worded comment on Cody Nighter, and this week we've done Laravel. Mm. So, what are we going to get this week? Oh, well, yeah, he's I'm sure hate I've her. said some proper stuff wrong, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, I did a bit of Facebook stalking on him, and I think he lives in Japan, so uh, we'll, we'll be getting some tickets. Man. It wasn't Facebook stalking, it was on Twitter, and even. Oh, <laughs> so, Jeff of oh. Japan. <laughs> just to <laughs> I have no beef with Jeff at this moment it's fine we're all good 
Cool. Nice work, man. Okay. Uh, so everyone, I yeah, it's been a great podcast and listeners, we'll see you next yeah. week. See you then. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at three devs and a maybe dot com or follow us on Twitter at the number three devs and a maybe. <laughs>